Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Wrist From Off The Cuff. This is actually one of our sub-segments uh, called Wristwatch Rambles and Rants, which is actually a sponsored segment brought to you by the fine folks at Wrist Candy Watch Club. So uh, basically when it comes to sponsored content, I like to be as tra transparent as possible. I do not do paid reviews. Uh, my reviews are always honest and open, but I don't mind sending a shout out, obviously, to uh, you know somebody who supports the channel. So with that said, I do like to do these types of kind of ramble segments. And this also has another special brought to you by Mr. Nick Shabazz, because he lent in this lovely Grand Seiko here, which is going to be part. So if you haven't checked out his channel, um, absolutely amazing. If you're a big fan of uh, pretty much EDC gear and also watches, but maybe from a more interesting perspective of somebody who is not solely, you know, focused on horology, but just generally premium gear, definitely give Nick's channel a look. Now, guys, um, when it comes to uh, fit and finish, I think everybody goes a little crazy for it. I think we get in a bit of a feeding frenzy. And it's been kind of this uh, acceptable thing that everybody's kind of on the same page is that Grand Seiko is just outstanding. Even for the crazy, you know, real hoity-toity, hot horologist types, you know, they can really admit that when it comes to individual fit and finish, that Grand Seikos are really just on another level. Um, so, with that said, I did, you know, while I had a Grand Seiko here, I've actually been planning to do kind of a, you know, an upper tier um, micro brand video follow up. But, uh, you know, while we have a Grand Seiko here, I think it'd be a perfect time to kind of compare and contrast some of the fit, some of the finish, and just kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm thinking when it comes to, you know, the fact that people pretty openly will you know, gush about Grand Seiko and the fit and finish, um, and then be a little bit more hesitant when it comes to the fit and finish of, let's say, a micro brand and say things like, well, you know, without the lineage or the history, it doesn't really matter. But, you know, I think that's kind of a limiting factor, right? Like, who's going to openly say like, hey, this watch can't be that nice. <laughs> it shouldn't be finished this nice. It shouldn't feel this nice. It shouldn't have this premium of a construction because the company hasn't been around long enough. Like, that's absolutely silly um, if you can do a really high level fit and finish why not do it and I think these are three exemplary micro brands you know I think that will compare quite well to the Grand Seiko when it comes to their fit and finish so with all that said let's zoom the camera out get these in hand and take a closer look all right guys now before we jump back in again big shout out to wrist candy watch club you know, if you guys are supporting the channel, definitely check out the links in the comments below. Uh, check out their website. They have really affordable uh, nylon NATO style straps. Let me grab a couple for you guys to see. Um, you know, and again, these are super affordable, nice quality, good length. They have really interesting hardware, as you can see here, although they don't have sliding keepers. They do have these rounded keepers that you can actually kind of fold over um, and, and get a little bit more of extra adjustability when you are tucking the tail back in. And then they have, you know, this is like the TGV finish there, which is a really nice one. Um, they just have a, a couple of nice colors and patterns here. Um, and again, it's one of those things. Not everybody can have a ton of watches, but you can always get a ton of straps. And I think that's a very nice feature to have. So again, big shout out to Wrist Candy Watch Club. So with that said, enough of that. Let's get into uh, everything here. So fit and finish, right? How important is it? Does it really is it something that you consider when you're buying a watch? I know that it seems like every time uh, I post a new video from Seiko, uh, everybody just, oh, at this price it should have this, at this price it should have that. At these prices I expect more or less of these things. So, uh, you know, obviously some things don't carry over. The more expensive it gets, if it's a dress watch, you're not going to get more loom. Uh, if it's, you know, if it's a diver, it doesn't necessarily mean it's just going to get deeper and deeper uh, water rating. Um, so 
With that said, I think we have some really excellent examples here of watches that from a fit and finish standpoint, whether it's the handset, the dial, the indices, the bracelets, especially, um, and the cases here, um, I think you guys are gonna find that they are fairly competitive when you put it up against something like the Grand Seiko. And of course, the Grand Seiko is a much higher prestige level, um, but also much higher um, cost level as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this real classic right here to start things off guys now some of the things that make you know grand seiko so excellent are of course the fit and the finish now some of your nicer seiko models that are non-grand seikos can have a similar level of finish but the fitment is not there it's not the same that's really the main difference between grand seiko and every other thing that has seiko in the name um, and when i say fitment i mean how tightly everything fits together as you can see there guys Look at that. Do you, you don't see any gaps in the end link? I can try to shake it a little bit. You probably can't even notice that there's any give there. And then, of course, in between the links themselves, um, this is a well-worn watch, so it is worn, but you can still see the level of fit there and finish. Look at the finish on these end links with, I'm sorry, with these bracelet links with a beautiful micro bevel that just comes and wraps very finely. Again, you look at the fine transitioning between brushed and polished. Also, you're looking at the luster of the polish. Of course, this is a Ratsu polishing. So basically, it's the equivalent of the Swiss uh, black polish. So basically, distortion-free, mirror-like finish when you look at that and then also you look at the brushing and you can see how fine the brushing is the directional brushing there you can see how uniform the lines are it doesn't look scratchy at all i mean obviously there's some wear marks but when you look at the the uh you know the unaffected brushing there you can see it's really quite you know to a luxury level and the crazy thing is these watches down here also have some finishing to a very luxury like level and then when you look at you know the touch points as well that's also huge look at the crown there look at the bezel the scallops that are in here for your grip you will actually see a similar let's actually grab up this nice Monta Ocean King. Look at the bezels there. Actually quite similar. I didn't, I've never noticed that until I had, of course, the Grand Seiko in hand. Look at the cutouts on there. Look at, again, now look at the bevels on the edges of this beautiful bracelet here. You're getting those fine bevels as well. You're a little bit of a thicker bevel. And then again, with the transition between brushed and polished take a look at the finished edge here high uh, high polished finish um, and then you can see there's a fine bevel and a very very clean transition that's something else that carries over uh, let me give these a quick wipe sorry about that so as you can see very similar from that standpoint then you look at the uh you know the complication when it comes to these indices of course you're not getting all the micro contours and whatnot that catch light that you're going to find on the grand seiko but you know look at the level of polish the height the luster on these indices, also quite good. And then you also do have that, that uh, sloped chapter ring. You're getting that here as well, but you're actually getting cutouts, so they're integrated with that. So that's uh, adding some extra uh, you know, points of of difficulty there right so that's the difference between you know premium and luxury luxury goes beyond premium is just you know uh, as as good as it needs to be uh, that's kind of my line where it draws uh, the, the 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 difference in the sand when it comes to premium versus luxury not that there's anything wrong with that but luxury just takes it to another level beyond what you need so it's one of those things where it's really a subjective value set at that point it's not objectively better because it doesn't necessarily need to to be this good but damn it when it is wow and then you take a look at the clasp here very nice clasp 
Uh, also, you have screws. Uh, it actually is a screw. There's two miniature screws and then a uh, pin that will go across inside, and that's how that system is. And then you can see nice beveling, all solid here when it comes to the clasp, the folding mechanism, very cleanly done. But let's compare that with the Monta and you have, again, also nicely milled and everything, finished, high bevels everywhere. Um, but here you're getting a nice little toolless micro adjust feature here. So you can take that, tighten it, loosen it as your, uh, as, you know, as your wrist may swell throughout the day. So that's it, I mean, these ones are, are quite similar in terms of look uh, with that aesthetic with the black and steel there. Of course, here with the Monta, you're getting a very traditional, you know, kind of that that reimagining of a Swiss dive watch uh, with the black and steel that was made so famous by Rolex. Uh, but you are also getting some red accents there. You know, also I could say is is a bit Rolex, um, but you can see here, of course, uh, the epitome of, of Japanese watchmaking with the Grand Seiko, you do have those nice hints of red as well. Um, so really beautifully done. Oh, let's do the action here. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. And of course it's bi-directional, so it can go either direction because that's how you're gonna track time zones. Beautiful. And here, let's do the action on the Monta. Only unidirectional. Ho, ho, ho. This 60 click action is absolutely outstanding. It's something special. Um, oh, wow, I'm just blown away. There's just, to have such a dialed in action at only 60 clicks, is just it's scary good guys it's it's insane it's really easy to do a 120 click bezel and kind of keep the action tidy and tight because it's such a small distance but here the individual clicks again very similar to the action on you know i'm gonna have to talk to the guys at monta and see if uh grand seiko was one of their inspirations because i'm i'm actually quite surprised and taken by the way that how well they compare together now let's look at something like formex here and the grand seiko formex uh of course known for their motorsports inspired themes um and they have you know some nice technology built in uh, as you can see we got the case suspension system there which is great gives you a little extra flex while on wrist and then you also do get a little quick adjust here um, essentially where oh, on the, it's actually on this side where you can pop this out and get a little bit of extra right there as you can see uh, so not the tidiest look but you know what Ooh, thumbs getting caught up in there um, you do get a little extra basically an on-the-fly half link um, of versatility there um, and then you do also get uh, you can see here, sorry, ceramic uh, detent ball there, which is definitely something more on that higher end side of the house that you'll see. Uh, sorry, it's actually super hot in here right now. Let me just readjust my gloves here so I don't get the tips of the fingers caught in anything again. But as you guys can see, got you know, check this out again, the micro bevels. The, look at the brushing in comparison. Look at the transition and the sharpness of that high polished bevel on the edge of the case. Really beautifully done. And look at the dial details on the Formex. Again, really to an extremely high level. Of course, here, this isn't, you know, one of Seiko's signature um, textured dials, but you can just take a look there at how sharp everything is. And it's, you know, 
it's not like one is screaming out as being superior, although one is, you know, has quite more lineage and heritage and is praised and hailed um, at, at quite a different level. I think, you know, when it comes to the handset finish, you're probably not going to find much um, that's going to be close to Grand Seiko, even in the way of comparing it to a Rolex. Um, and when it comes to Rolex hands, uh, the finish on the Monta's hands is actually quite close i mean it's it's scary um and then can especially considering how much cheaper a monta is but again guys you look at the oh, also you know look at the links here screw in uh they have what you like you do also get this beautiful um beveling on this uh, dial so that the date you're not catching any gap underneath uh where here it's just a straight cut out so you know again you're, you're getting the nice thing about micro brands is that they're always going to go that extra mile look at here what we have we have the nice frame date window versus again here it's a pretty standard cutout speaking of standard cutout check out the brellum my gosh standard cutout there um, but but here you have a full chronograph guys um, a COSC chronograph so these two are COSC uh, models uh, the Formex and the Brellum while the Monta is tuned in-house um, it doesn't have any type of certifications but they basically tune those between plus and minus five seconds which COSC is plus uh, you know plus six minus four and then uh, Grand Seiko you know they don't I don't believe they guarantee theirs but their ranges is about plus or minus five as well um, um, this uh, spring drive will will do much better than that uh, and it's something like I think 10 seconds a month so um, when you look at these again look at the bevels look at the transition look at the fine brushing here this brushing on the brellum is quite comparable especially because when you look at the kind of roundness of the links it actually gives you a similar read um, versus here these ones are a little bit flatter in comparison um, so it's not quite the same but here you although it's a very different link design the, the roundness and the contour of the link look at the shine on the edges here of those links and then and now even looking at the clasp a little bit more similar um, but look at how well integrated this clasp is on the brellum my gosh of course all milled like you would expect um, really beautifully engineered nothing from a catalog guys this is was made for brellum and man look at how beautiful that it just all fits together so seamless right and then look at the Grand Seiko it's very nice but not quite as seamless again so uh, also uh, with the Brellum this is going to be pin and collar um, which isn't everybody's favorite um, as a matter of fact it's probably most people's least favorite I actually don't have problems with pin and collar it is more complicated to set at first but you pretty much set it and forget it. You never have to go back and do anything to it. Screws can back out, you know, so that's something you do have to take, you know, pay attention to. You can also strip screws. Um, and if you strip the screw, you're going to ruin the link uh, because they screw together versus here. Um, you know, you might lose a pin or a collar, but if you still have the link, you're good to go and you can just get more pins and collars uh, pretty easily. Uh, they're pretty much, uh, you know, invisibly light <laughs> at that point. And check it out boom got that modified 7750 mechanical chronograph so you're getting more complications of course you are getting a nice power reserve indicator here and the movement itself is actually finished quite to a high degree but it's not a display case back and one of the nice things is here with these micros you can get some nice little display case back options uh, beautiful 2824 COSC top grade um, and then of course the value 77 7750 base that has been just absolutely immaculately worked over um, COSC spec as well top grade so just beautifully done um, just look at these look at the brushing look at the transition so that's the thing that I really want to get the point across on because there's so many people that just openly just throw their arms open even if they're not somebody that will ever buy a Grand Seiko they will just admit like hey in terms of comparing fit and finish 
it, you're going to be hard pressed to catch anything that is going to be anywhere near in the under ten thousand dollar range right it's just hey at that price steel watches under 10 grand you're not going to find something that generally is going to be comparable to a grand seiko and are these watches compare i mean they're not I wouldn't say they're like fighting or on the cusp, but man, they are damn comparable. And there's a lot of people that just see something like this Brellum and just go, oh, I never paid 2,500 bucks for, a, you know, for something that didn't have a bunch of heritage. Well, would you pay for this fit and finish though? Like, look how crisp that is, guys. Look at this beautiful, oh my gosh, just the, look at the execution on this dial. Look at those indices, heat treated blued hand, COSC certified. Look how, sh look at the touch points here on this crown. That is insane. You want to know where you're going to get a crown that's going to be finished to that quality somewhere else? It's going to be a tutor and you're going to pay <laughs> probably close to double the price of this. And the tutors that you're going to have it on is just going to be like a three hander. It's not going to be uh you know a chronograph so you're again so much value packed into there right you're not going to find you know a lot of watches that are going to have quirks like this little suspension so when you have it on the wrist it actually rides well and and that side of it and you know you're not going to find a lot that are going to have a, a bezel action like this in this price range you know under two thousand dollars this is just absolutely and, and then you're getting a, a quick adjust fully milled clasp everything finished to that just finest degree i mean guys these watches i i mean ultimately you know swiss made coming out of switzerland um assembled there all that stuff and even if you negate where any of the other pieces are from which monta goes you know into great lengths to ba basically have as much from switzerland as possible but even if you're able to get this fit and finish somewhere else this is not cheap you can't just find you just can't find this stuff you you really can't you cannot find a finish of this level anywhere else and honestly probably part of it is due to if they could find it cheaper somewhere else they don't necessarily they might not even feel comfortable trying to sell a watch that's not swiss made um with this level of finishing because people are just not gonna buy it so you know i guess maybe from a marketing perspective it might be smart that you know these three contenders are all swiss made micro brands and they all happen to be finished to just an insane level now none of these are super cheap right you got about 1800 bucks, uh, about 2300 um, and then you have, I want to say about 1200 here. So different price ranges um, and then versus, you know, the Grand Seiko Spring Drive, which I want to say is uh, somewhere in the $6,000 range. So this is quite a bit more expensive than everything you're seeing on the table, but is it is it that is it blowing them out of the water in terms of fit and finish and feeling like a luxury timepiece? No, I mean there's a lot that I'm sure under a loop is going to expose some differences when you start getting into some of the fine details of the handset and the uh, finishing on these these indices. Those things are going to be something uh, to a to a higher level, but when it comes to uh, you know everything else, uh, definitely something uh, a little bit different from that point of view but let's actually get these pieces on wrist all right guys as you can see man look at the way it just plays with the light it just rolls this this feels like a million bucks on the wrist guys this it feel, this is a luxury timepiece same goes here obviously on the grand seiko absolutely immaculate wraps around the wrist it just has the beautiful thing here is you're getting a a high amount of wrist presence but everything in there is still really high quality sometimes you blow things up and because of the scale you don't necessarily catch all the fine details here it still wears those details you can have it at you know a watch this size and still be impressed with just how beautiful it is uh, so let's actually take off the brellum let's move on to mr formex here Man, check that out, guys. 
Look at the light play on this flat polish links here. Look at the micro bevels. Look at that fine edge bevel there across the case. The chamfering is just beautiful. Even the brushing that goes across the top of the bezel itself. And then the really beautiful, lustrous, polished bezel section there. Really, God, thing plays with light. Again, you're getting a luxury experience for what, 1200 bucks? COSC, Swiss made, come on. That's pretty dang good. Don't get me wrong, guys. This thing is special, right? You're, you're the spring drive. It's a Grand Seiko. It's it's kind of the hot new watch geek watch. You know, it's it's the hipster, the hip. You know, if if you're into watches and you want to show somebody that you're cool, um, having a Grand Seiko is definitely a legit flex. It says, hey, I'm not hoity-toity, but I appreciate quality and I understand you know, the fine points of why certain watches cost what they are. And maybe I can't afford a $40,000 Patek, but I'm smart enough to know that in this price point, this is going to be uh, just an absolute giant slayer in terms of fit and finish uh, as a Grand Seiko. So let's go ahead and get the Formax off here. Ooh, it's hot, guys. I need to move into a place that has AC. <laughs> Let's set this up. Uh, probably right here. Okay. Oh man, that signature Monta brace. Oh, I can actually tighten it up just a hair. And the nice thing is I really can. Look at that. It's that easy. So I'll throw that back on the wrist. Little sweaty guys. This video has been going long, but hey, that's why they call it a ramble and rant. Look at that beast. Now, when it comes to that experience, that steel sports watch, that black and steel diver with those just perfect proportions and perfectly balanced aesthetic. I mean, there's, uh, to a certain extent, there's a Rolex Submariner and then there's everything else. But with that said, guys, when it comes to anything outside of that range, I mean, it's hard to argue the aesthetics of this. I mean, sure, the Monta doesn't have the heritage, but man, I mean, for me, aesthetically, this it kills, you know, a Seamaster 300 professional. I mean, this this thing is just absolutely beautiful. Um, it's has the right touches of modern, the right touches of vintage aesthetic. I mean, it kind of does it all, and it's and it just distills that uh black and steel diver aesthetic in a way that is comparable to a rolex um, and then also look at the way the light plays look at the fine brushing the bevels the transitions super sharp those beautiful indices the hand set there again really high luxury level something you know beyond what you need you know as much as i love my zen uh watches you know ultimately they're a premium timepiece um they're not luxurious they are just done damn good to the best that they can do but they don't go over the top you know that they, they don't they're not that extra just wow punch you in the face factor that you get with these types of watches and for me again that is the the difference and that's the scale that sets things apart when you think luxury just something just going beyond what's needed right um and wow of course this grand seiko just captures all of that um and then some but guys again these little micro brands here under you know two thousand dollars uh close to uh, only slightly over one thousand dollars uh and then geez when you think about a mechanical chronograph i mean 2300 bucks isn't even that expensive for a chronograph <laughs> i mean it's crazy and then you get one that's coc certified um you know and just done to the every degree just over the top insanely good uh fit and finish so with all that said guys let me know what you think in the comments below uh if you like the video please do it like and if you're already please subscribe for more content just like this one last time big thank you wrist candy watch club also mr nick shabazz for lending this bad boy in uh i'll be giving this back to you now because uh this is probably the last segment i'll need to shoot with it so with all that said guys uh if you like the video again hit like 
all that stuff. Leave me a leave me a couple. Just you know what? What do you think? Let me know. Thanks.